would George be smiling now if he was here? And they could kind of apply to each reunion that he missed. And would you agree with that, people smiling? Well, I, would, I couldn't agree with it more. I have to say this about George. I think of all of us, of all the, of all the siblings, I think George was, was probably the strongest of family than any of us. We all are strong for family. Mm -hmm. But it's George would, would actually preach it. I, I remember when, when we were up at the farm with Tim Spicer. He was the one that did, that did the video for, right. on, the, on the wagon. That was so important to him. None of us felt that way. We enjoyed the moment. Mm -hmm. George captured, he wanted to capture the history. Yeah. And it was very important to him because it was family. Mm -hmm. He really strongly believed in, in, in family. More so, perhaps, than we do. More intense. Mm -hmm. We believe it, but, but in it, but mm -hmm. he's more intense. He, he would put himself out for it. So, oh, yeah. to answer your question, absolutely, probably more than any of us. Um, you know, the family and, and his uh, his love for goodwill. Mm -hmm. You know, generating right. and, and wanting things to be a happy thing. Couldn't, he couldn't be more sincere. I got out of the, the Air Force, and I got out in September, and I had a pocket full of money, and I had uh, nothing to do, and I wanted to go get my schooling started. So he says, come out, get you in school. So I went down there for the, get, get started, because I had none of my paperwork with me, and I had to sort it out, but I wanted to get started. And so the next year, I went to, you know, the, I went to the journalism school over at SMU in Dallas. But, uh, I needed some place to get started. He went down. He said, I know the president. I'll get, you know, this typical George. I know this guy. I know that guy. So I know the senator, you know, I mean, and the, no problem. So he got me down here. And I, I did it. I didn't even have a high school diploma. And he got me in as a freshman. You know, he, he tell me how he did it. You know, he knew the president. And the president was a Korean War vet. And I was a Korean War vet. And so it, we, and he, his son got, I mean, the president's son was a Korean War vet. And I think the, the president's son got injured or wounded. And so there was a, you know, there was sort of a bonding there, you know. And so the president uh, waived waived a lot of the the normal requirements to get started as a freshman. And I didn't even have the bill, the GI Bill, going yet. You know, I didn't get it going until the next year. So I was on my own for that first year. But you know, the, the money I had kind of tied me over. But he got me in. He got me going. And and he kind of saw to it that I got that you know that start. So I've always thanked him for that. I probably wouldn't have gone to school if it wasn't for him. Because you know, he, he's the one that got me going. Because, you know, you, saw, you, you set a new pattern, mm -hmm. and uh, if it's it gets too ingrained, you don't go back. You don't change. But when I got out, I was right to go to school. And, and if I didn't hit what the iron was hot, I probably wouldn't have gone. So, but I think, you know, I, the, the glass thing is just one thing. You know, he does. I'll give you another example I'm talking about. The guy doesn't drink. You know, he didn't drink. But he would pretend, he'd go to a party and he'd pretend he was ossified so that he wouldn't embarrass the people that was his friends who were drinking. Mm -hmm. But he'd drink water or ginger ale. Yeah, he never drank. He always was not a drinker. But he, he put on a good show. He, he'd fool the life out of you. You'd think that he was a, a boozer. But he didn't. You know, Titus and George were in the Air Force together, paratroopers. George was a gambler. But not a very careful one. <laughs> Titus was the diplomat, and uh, I I may have this wrong, but they were I guess they were overseas and they were in the Air Force. The the, uh, the I think it was the 82nd Airborne, and they were in Japan. And you know, in, in, in the military, you get involved in gambling. You know that those guys can be brutal. Some of them are professional gamblers, and. Uh, you don't mess around with him. Well, George, you know how reckless he was. And, you know, he, he was known to, 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 he could tell the mafia to, to go to hell and they look forward to the trip. You know, he just had a way about him and he got away with things that none of us could do and get away with. Well, it didn't work that time, you know, you know and I understand it. He got into a crap game, I guess, or, or a card game and uh, he had uh, cheated. I understand it, and they caught him. And it took Titus to, to, to bail him out. Now, they never told that story. I don't remember ever hearing anybody tell that story in public. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it, maybe Titus would be ready to give you the details on the next <laughs> reunion. Yeah. Because, you know, Titus had to get him out. I mean, they, as, as much as they had differences, they were also very close. 
because you know they went to college together, they played football together. Um, but Titus was in sports. Titus was always the one that was you know the leading. You know, from Golden Gloves to baseball to football, to all whatever sport he touched, he was good at. George, I guess you know, was kind of like along with the, for the trip. Mm -hmm. But they they spent a lot of time together, and they, you know, they were in the airborne together. You know, right, right after the day he was uh, the day before he died, he called me, and, you know, and, and I guess Dara called, and they gave me the phone, and they he knew he was you know he only had you know, hours, maybe days at the most. He died that night, but uh, they he wanted to she wanted to know if if he, I guess he asked her if I do the funeral. And so I wanted to talk to him a little bit about it, you know, and you know, it's kind of an awkward thing to do, but I don't think it was any secret that he had, you know, over, uh, you know, he was, his, um, all the efforts to, to preserve his life were, were at their end, so he kind of resigned himself to the fact that that was it. But uh, uh, even then, you see, right up to the very end, there was, there, there was a very serious relationship, so I, I can't remember any funny anecdotes. The one I think about, you know, to me it was funny, like falling out that back window, and where's George when he's laying out cold on a pile of chicken manure, you know, with a nail stuck in his leg. You know, but he's alive. Yeah. He's alive. You know. But it was it was sort of a heroic thing, really, when you think about it, because he, he went up there to try to save the chicken coop, and when he realized he couldn't, he was trapped. And the only way out was that trap door that where we threw the chicken manure out, you know. And, he fell on some fresh lumber because we had we just finished the building. We hadn't cleared away the old lumber yet. So I guess that's about the best I can do at this point in time.